Hi, it's Alexis Hasselberger, time management and productivity coach. I've been thinking all about habits, uh, building new habits, breaking bad habits. What is a habit and why am I thinking about this? You know, because it is the new year and this is a time when a lot of us are trying to change our habits for the better. So I did a video and a blog post a couple of weeks ago about some strategies we can use when we're trying to build new habits without trying to rely on willpower because that just doesn't work. And you know what? When we're trying to break bad habits, willpower alone doesn't work very well either. And so I wanna share just a few strategies that you can try when you're trying to break a you know, so-called bad habit. Uh, habit's kind of a neutral word. Um, it's just an automated behavior. It's something we do without thinking about it, but we're humans and we think about things in terms of good and bad. And so um, we're gonna talk about how do we break those bad habits? What are some strategies that we can use? So I'm gonna give you four strategies. The first one is replacement. So replacement is simply where you take a behavior that is not so great, it's not serving you so well, and in fact, you replace it with a behavior that is less bad, that is neutral, or that is positive. So, you know, nicotine patches are a classic example of this. Uh, or maybe you're trying to, you know, drink less during the week, and so instead of your nightly glass of wine, you're going to replace it with, you know, sparkling water with lemon. So what you're doing here is not, you know, just trying to stop uh, all together, you're just replacing the behavior you're already doing with something else because it's a little bit easier, right? You still have the triggers, you still have the context uh, that's causing you to, you know, do this automated behavior. And so you're just swapping out the behavior. So that's replacement. Now we have another strategy called convenience or inconvenience, sorry. So convenience is when we're trying to build habits, right? We are going to make it as convenient as ourselves for possible as possible. When we are trying to break habits, we want to make it as inconvenient as possible for us. So we want to add friction. So if you are trying to say, you know, eat less junk food, this is not having that junk food in the house. So that if you want it, you got to go, you know, all the way to the store to get it. Or, you know, maybe it doesn't have to be that extreme. Maybe it's just that you put it up on a higher shelf. You know, it's really interesting. You'd think, well, that wasn't going to work because like I already know where it is and I'll go get it. But there have been a lot of studies that have shown that it doesn't have to be super inconvenient. It just has to be slightly inconvenient. So, you know, for instance, people will eat half as much candy if they have to walk six feet away versus if they can just reach out and grab some from the candy bowl. People will eat less junk food if it is an account in a cabinet versus just right below on the counter, right? So it's not all about food. There are plenty of different ways and different habits that we can build, but you want to essentially add friction if you're trying to um, you know, break a bad habit that's not serving you very well. Now, another strategy we can use, the third one, uh, this one's a little bit extreme, I think. It doesn't work very well for me, but I know it does work for a lot of people. And this is the strategy of uh, essentially finding yourself, right? So saying, okay, every time I do this thing I'm not wanting to do, I am going to take some of my hard-earned money and I am going to either donate it, maybe to even a cause that I don't agree with. That's even more of a deterrent. Um, some people like to make bets with other people. So, uh, you know, I am going to commit to doing this. And if I don't do this, then I will pay you 50 bucks. Lots of different ways that people do this. There's even some apps now that help facilitate this. So there's an app called Spar that helps you make these wagers with, um, with other strangers about what the things are that you're trying to do or not do. So if this works for you, if, you know, losing a little bit of that hard earned cash is something that will get you to, you know, replace one of these negative behaviors with something else, then that's something that you could try. And then lastly, my favorite habit breaking strategy is maybe a little bit more boring, but it is my favorite, um, probably because it goes right along with my philosophy of separating the planning from the doing, is this, is to create an if then plan. So for instance, uh, you wanna identify whatever the trigger is. So let's say we'll go back to you know, consumption because this is something that we can all, you know, we can all kind of understand. Let's say you are trying to you know, eat less junk food, right? What's your if then plan gonna be? We don't wanna be sitting there thinking, oh, I'm hungry, should I eat the cookie or should I eat the banana, right? We just wanna have pre-decided this in advance. So you can do this by making an if then plan. If I get hungry and I need a snack, I am going to eat a piece of fruit. 
Now, when that time comes when you're hungry, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to make a decision. You just eat the piece of fruit because you've already decided that. You're taking the thinking that if then in the moment of, oh, what should I do? Should I not do? Battling of willpower. You're just taking that out of the equation entirely because you're deciding in advance what you're going to do. So identify what the trigger is and then decide what you're going to do. Another example of this would be like if you're biting your nails and you want to stop that, why are you doing it? Is it when you're anxious or maybe nervous? right? Identify when it's happening so that you can more easily recognize the signs and then find a replacement behavior. So what's your if then plan going to be? If you don't want to bite your nails, maybe it's that you always have, you know, one of those fidget spinners in your pocket, like the kids they used to use, right? And that you can twirl that, or maybe you have a pen and you're going to, you know, click the cap of it, or, you know, I don't know what it is, but what are you going to do when this behavior comes up or when these circumstances arrive? So that is the, the last of these habit breaking and building strategies. Or this one's really about breaking. Not all of these will work for you, but I bet at least one of them will. So give it a try. Uh, let me know uh, which one works for you or if you've tried any of these before and move forward and break some of those bad habits that you don't want dragging you down anymore. Hey guys, it's always, um, I just want to tell you to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and only 1% of you guys that watch our videos are actually subscribed, so it would just be a big help to subscribe.